So there are many notable animation studios from Japan that are quite well known, like Madhouse that has done animes such as Death Note, Hunter x Hunter, One Punch Man, and many more. Or even Mappa Studios has really come up in the last few years in which they had done Jujutsu Kaisen, Attack on Titan, and Chainsaw Man. There are many known animation studios around Japan, but the one animation studio that is known worldwide, an animation studio that is even known by people who don't even watch anime, and that is Studio Ghibli. The reason why I want to talk about Studio Ghibli is because of the new film that is coming out by them, The Boy and Heron. But I'm not going to be talking about that film today, as I'm going to leave that for a later date. We're going to be delving into the history and amazing films done by Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki, the genius behind Studio Ghibli. Hayao Miyazaki was born on January 5th, 1941 in Tokyo and his father Katsuji Miyazaki was the director of Miyazaki Airplane, which was owned by Hayao's uncle, in which they had manufactured rudders for fighter planes during World War II, which if that reminds you of anything, it closely resembles Miyazaki's quite recent film, The Wind Rises. When Hayao was just a child, he was told that he wouldn't live past the age of 20, as he had suffered from digestive problems. But he was not the only one with health issues in his family. His mother Yoshika suffered from spinal problems and had spent a few years in the hospital before being able to return home and be nursed from the comfort of her own home. She was quite close to Hayao and had influenced him a lot, and as well as his later work. Even though she had quite a bit of health issues, she was able to still live until the age of 72. Hayao Miyazaki's educational journey included a time at Omiya Junior High School, initially harboring dreams of becoming a manga artist. He soon realized his talents were more aligned with drawing mechanical objects like planes, tanks, and battleships, rather than people as he had discovered that he wasn't able to draw people. This period of artistic exploration was also marked by the influence of renowned manga artists including Tetsuji Fukushima, Soji Yamakawa, and Asumo Tezuka, whose work significantly shaped his creative path. Miyazaki chose to destroy a large portion of his initial creations as he felt that he was imitating Tezuka's style and it was a bad form and a hindrance to his own artistic growth, leading him to make this decision in pursuit of developing a unique style. After Miyazaki had graduated from Omiya Junior High and started to attend Toyotama High School during his last year of high school, he had truly found an interest in animation after he had watched Panda and the Magic Serpent which was Japan's first animated full-length film in color. He had finished high school and he had started to attend Gakushin University and had majored in Japanese industrial theory in the political economy department. He had joined a sort of comic book club which back then was called Children's Literature Research Club. During his free time, he would still meet with his art teacher from middle school and would often sketch in his studio. This was a time he would draw manga where he would have thousands of starts to stories, but he would never complete any of the stories he would start and by 1963, Miyazaki had graduated from university. Right after Miyazaki had finished school, he had gotten employed by Toei Animation, the same studio that animates One Piece, Dragon Ball, and Digimon. Okay, I just had to include Digimon because I grew up with it and I love it. He had rented an apartment that was 80 square feet and his rent back then was 6,000 yen. But keep in mind, this was back in 1963. So in today's currency is about 29,259 yen, which converted to USD is about $197. And the income that he used to get was 19,500 yen back in 1963. And now it is worth 95,093 yen. And in US dollars, it's about $640. During this time, Miyazaki had worked as an in between artists on a film called Doggy March and an anime called Wolf Boy Ken. He would later work his way up and become a chief animator, concept artist, and scene designer for the film Great Adventure of Horus Prince of the Sun, which was released back in 1968. During the production of this film, Miyazaki had worked closely with Yasuo Otsuka, who influenced a great amount to Miyazaki's work and was directed by Aso Takahata, who would become a prominent figure in Miyazaki's life later on. The film had an incredible feedback from critics and had shown to be a pivotal work in the evolution of animation. Miyazaki had ended up staying at Toei Animation for about 10 years until he had left the company back in 1971 alongside with Aso Takahata. Miyazaki and Takahata would end up working together in multiple different studios during the 1970s, where they had worked on 23 episodes of Lupin the Third Part 1 back in A Production and also working on shorts for Panda Go Panda. Finally, Miyazaki would work on his first full-length film, Lupin 3, back in 1979. Hayao Miyazaki's distinct artistic approach was notably showcased in his manga series, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which he penned for Animaje magazine. This serial styled in Japanese cartoon tradition revolves around the character Nausicaa, a princess and a hesitant fighter navigating her way through a world devastated by ecological disasters. The popularity of the manga led to the creation of a film's adaptation in 1984, sharing the same title, becoming Hayao Miyazaki's second feature film that he had directed. There were some issues with the release of the film in the West, where they had badly edited the film under the name Warriors of the Wind, which Miyazaki didn't like and didn't allow for his films to be released 
released in the West for a long time until there was a deal done with Walt Disney back in 1996, where they wouldn't edit the film at all if they wanted to release it there. This project further cemented the collaborative bond between Miyazaki and his colleague Takahata, settling the stage for a future joint ventures. Then came June 15, 1985, the time when Studio Ghibli had been founded by Hayao Miyazaki, Aso Takahata, and producer Toshio Suzuki. Toshio had helped work on Naushika and because of that, Miyazaki had asked him to join in founding Studio Ghibli. There is quite a bit of confusion as to what is exactly the first film that was done by Studio Ghibli as Naushika is a part of Studio Ghibli's collection but was made before the studio had been founded and that the official first film that the studio would release would end up becoming Castle in the Sky back in 1986. It was quite well known that Miyazaki had written and directed about 48% of all Studio Ghibli films. The number would be a tad higher if we only included the films that he had written as he didn't direct Whisper of the Heart, Ariete, and From Up on Poppy Hill. From this point on, Miyazaki would go on to create amazing films. He was known to direct the films completely in his vision. He would storyboard everything, production would even begin before the storyboard was even complete. So not even a single person in production, not even Miyazaki himself, wouldn't know the end of the film. Miyazaki was known to not use a script as he felt that he didn't have the time for that and he really just relied on intuition. While CGI is common these days in anime, even Studio Ghibli is known to use CGI but they only would use 10% of the feature film when they do. Miyazaki is known to take a lot of inspiration for his films when thinking of the character Chihiro from Spirit Away, it was modeled after his friend, co-producer Seiji Okuda's 10-year-old daughter. Ghibli had found its first success at box office with the film Kiki's Delivery Service and it was the highest grossing film in 1989 in Japan. Miyazaki had received many awards from his Ghibli films, but he had received three nominations for the Oscars for Howl's Moving Castle, The Wind Rises, and the film that had actually won an Oscar and the only anime film to ever win was Spirited Away. Miyazaki had spent a lot of time creating such amazing films in the last 38 years like Spirit Away, My Neighbor Totoro, Ponyo, The Wind Rises, and even now with the film Boy and the Heron, which slated to be Miyazaki's final film. But that was also the same thing that was said for The Wind Rises which was released back in 2013, about 10 years ago. So who knows if we'll ever receive another Miyazaki film out of this, but he has clearly showed why he is one of the best directors of all time and how he came to be one of the most loved and influential animation directors. Miyazaki has set a standard in animation and will continue to do so with his work for years to come. If you would like to see more videos like this please let me know in the comment section below and also make sure to like the video and subscribe for more hey, she said baby you so cold i said i'm just scared because i thought the one was the one that i just said